the first person that you lead is yourself. And the first way that you do that is you figure out what are the values and priorities in your life because chronic stressful situations occur when those things are out of alignment with what you're actually doing. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates. The book comes out in September. All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here. And today I have Josh Martin on who, Josh is a coach. How long have you been coaching, Josh? Uh, 22 years this 22 year. 22 years. And has it all been CrossFit or did you do other stuff before that? No, man. It's uh, I actually started kind of in like sports performance, found okay. my way into CrossFit, Olympic mm -hmm. weightlifting. Yeah. And, and then like all the other coaching, which I'm sure we'll get into. I just see everything as coaching. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Same way. Same here. I can't look at anything without having my coaching glasses on. Exactly. So we're going to talk about all sorts of different things. Um, we're going to talk about coaching. We're going to talk about your story. Um, but I really want to highlight some of your things you've picked up along the way, help people understand the commonalities, I think, between all of our journeys, even though, I mean, you've dealt with hundreds of people, I've dealt with hundreds of people, and we yeah. all, everyone's got a different place they're starting from and trying to get to. But um, I think there's some commonalities. I'd love to see if your thoughts on the, the ins, uh, thoughts and insights on the journey parallel my thoughts and insights on the journey. Absolutely, man. I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your journey first. So uh, you came out of the womb and you were snatching and cleaning and jerking and throwing kettlebells around, right? That's that's how it all worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I wish, man. Um, do, do we want to go back all the way to like where I was born and stuff? Or do no, we, we don't need to go that far back. But I'm sure, okay. I mean, do you have a, a health journey story to tell? Honestly, no, man, I don't. Yeah. Um, I don't have like one of the classic like um, transformation journeys or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's uh, I was in college actually for exercise science um, at the University of Florida. Go Gators. Um, <laughs> and I came home for a break of some sort. And I've, I'm the oldest of three. I've got two younger brothers. And one of my brothers was at a uh, sports performance training facility here in like the Tampa area. I'm in Tampa, yeah. Florida, just outside called Velocity Sports Performance. And um, the, the guys there heard that I was home and they were talking to my parents and my parents were telling them what I was going to school for. And they're like, oh man, bring him by. He might like what we're doing. Long story short, uh, that guy um, gave me the first start that I ever had. I spent every waking moment that I could at that place. And I've been coaching ever since. Awesome. Awesome. What do you like about coaching? That, that's a young, that's a young place to start to be, have get started that young and still be doing it. Most people start something and then 20 years later, they're doing something totally different. Like how, what is it about coaching that's got you coming back for so long? Yeah, I, I, I think in the early days, I, I'm, I'm still a person to this very day that's very fascinated with movement in general, whether it's my mm -hmm. daughter that dances, my wife, you know, had a background in, in dance, I, any kind of movement it has always fascinated me from a very, very young age. So I think that was probably the genesis of it. But more than anything, it was just the possibilities that existed of number one, I saw people doing stuff that I didn't even know was possible for a human to do, which yeah. really just struck a chord with me. And then, you know, I, I played sports my whole life growing up and being at the university setting with kind of the best of the best athletes, that really drove me to want to be a part of that. Um, but more than anything, like if I zoom out and be super objective, it's just the, the potential of getting somebody to where they ultimately want to go. Mm, okay. Uh, that's why I say like to me, so much of what people do in their daily life, whether they call themselves a coach or not, that's what's going on is somebody has a place where they're starting today. They've got a place where they want to get to. To me, coaching is bridging that gap and giving them the tools to get where they want to go. Yeah. Have you ever run into a problem or how do you, let me just ask you this way. How do you address or uh, alleviate people's concerns? Because you work with people now, like from all walks of life. Yeah. Um, you don't deal with just, you know, college athletes or professional athletes. Sure. How do you, how do you help people or communicate to people that you don't have a story, but you can help them with theirs. 
Oh man, that's great. That's I've never been asked that question. Um, I I think more than anything, like if I could actually turn around and show you the back of my shirt, these are the shirts that we we wore at my gym. Um, mm-hmm. Whenever you're on the coaching floor, and on the back it just says coach. And there's three words that I think uh, every coach um, that are characteristics that every coach needs to have. One is patience. Uh, one is consistency. And the third one I think relates to the question that you're asking, and that's curiosity. Um, mm. I'm a very, very curious person by nature. I love asking questions. I'm very comfortable with silence, you know, letting people think through things as I ask them questions. I'm not afraid of asking too many questions. In my early days, I had a mentor that told me, when in doubt, just ask more questions. Yes. And then as you get better and better, you just ask better questions. So even to this day, I'm super curious. Like I would love to turn this interview around on you and ask you a bunch of questions, <laughs> but I know that's not the place, but I think we that could, that's I mean, Hey, I'm totally down. We can make it a back and you forth know, if you want. Hey, whatever. That's, uh, I, I think that that's probably served me well is I don't have any assumptions about anybody no matter how similar they might be to the person that came before them or the person that referred them to me, Mm -hmm. I could just kind of sit in the pocket and ask questions and genuinely listen. I think Mm -hmm. that's these days, not to say that I'm some unique person or unique unicorn, but I think it's rare for people to actually listen and not just wait for their turn to talk. So perhaps that's just served me well, even though I don't have this big transformation story with regards to health and fitness. No, that's awesome. I, I like that. Um, s- something that you, when you talk about the three words that are on the back of your shirts, we well, said that's, what was the first one? Uh, patience. Patience, consistency, and curiosity. Is that what it was? Yep. Yep. I love that for so many reasons, not just from the mentality of a coach, but those three things are, I mean, you know, you know I have a book coming out. Yeah. Those three things are at the core of what I think everyone should cultivate in themselves. That's why I put them right? there. It's for the coach as much as it is for the client. Yeah. So talk about that. What? Are, why are those three things important for your gym members? Well, I think patience, even though I think it should speak for itself, I'll, I'll kind of like stretch that one out a little bit. It's when, when people show up to you as a, we'll just call them like general population clients, gen pop. Mm-hmm. And, and whatever goal that they have, um, they didn't get to where they were overnight. I'll never forget learning this in university. There's this term that was called creeping obesity, which Ooh. is where yeah. you, you, you know this one, right? It's yeah. like yeah. You, you didn't suddenly become obese in the last year or the last 30 mm-hmm. days or the last six months. It's usually you know, five to 10 pounds a year over the course of a decade. And that can be, you know, 50 to 100 pounds difference. And so that's the lens that I would always approach people with if they had some sort of like body composition goal change is to say, look, you didn't get this way overnight. It's been X amount of years before you were where you want to get back to. And so I'm not saying that you're not going to see change quickly, but if you want it to be sustainable, and that's a big part of what I teach or try to teach people is that I'm not in the business of fast track, band-aid, shortcut, hacks, and solutions. Yeah. Um, I want to look at the 40-year plan, not the 40-day plan. And so that's what patience to me is about. So that's why my consultations take an hour at least. That's why I like to ask a lot of questions and get background experience on people. So that's to me what patience means, is that this we're in it for the long haul. And very upfront. If people are like, look, I've, I've got something in six weeks. Hey, I totally understand that. I respect it, but here's the name of a couple people that would be perfect for you to go see, you know, for a six week transformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then consistency, where does that play? So for me, what consistency does is it removes all of the silly complexity that we have created within our own industry. What, Um, what are you talking about? It's so yeah. straightforward. There's, it's just simple. Just do this and everything's good. Except there's 18 people saying 18 different things that you need to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, how, you know, you asked me how long I've been coaching I, and I didn't ask you, how long have you been coaching now? I'm going on 14 now. Yeah. So you've, you've passed the point where you think you know it all to now <laughs> every day you wake <laughs> yeah. up and you realize there's more that I don't know. Yeah. But with that knowledge comes the wisdom that things are super, super simple. 
it, you know, people argue about methodologies, they argue about, you know, strength training protocols and all kinds of stuff. And that really gets in the way of just people being consistent. And they're like, well, then what should I do for exercise? Um, and I have three words that I tell them it's move every day. That's well, yeah. then what about this? Like move every day. And if the movement that you did today prevents you from moving tomorrow, you did too much. So that consistency to me speaks to, can you do this thing for the next 30, 40, 50 years? Yeah. And if it's unsustainable activity, then the answer is no. Nice. Yeah. yeah. How do, how do you think, um, consistency and patience interrelate? Um, it's a, it's another thing I've, I've never thought of, but I, I certainly think that they go hand in hand from the sense that, you know, part of being consistent is in recognizing that you're not just going to wake up tomorrow and have the thing that you're mm -hmm. after, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there does need to be an element of patience for this thing that I'm going after. And so outcomes in our industry, yes, are important, but it's not so much about the destination as it is about the journey. Yeah. And so I think that those things are, I don't want to say one in the same because they're certainly different, but they're much more related than not. Yeah. I, don't I know think if that the, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think the mentality that it takes to, to understand and, and live in patience is needed in order to maintain consistency. Yeah. Right. That the mindset of it's going to take a while. That means I have to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. If you don't have the patience, it's harder to be consistent. Yeah. Can I give you a, um, an example of this that just popped into yeah. my mind? Yeah. So I've got a, a, a business consulting client that I work with. And again, whether it's people in fitness or people in business, it's all coaching to me. Mm -hmm. So I get onto a call with this guy about four months ago and so we're kind of looking at his metrics, his profit and loss and stuff like that. And he had just had like a phenomenal month. And I was like, man, you know, have you looked at this yet? And he's like, no, no, no. I don't typically look at the numbers too often. Um, I was like, really? I was like, why is that? He goes, well, I just trust the process that if I do the things that we've talked about that I need to do, that all that stuff will take care of itself. Mm, that's awesome. And I was like, I, so I've been quoting that statement yeah, from him yeah. for, for like six months now or however long ago I said it was, because that's just such a beautiful picture of that. It's like having faith in the process. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean he doesn't look at it, but sure. having enough faith in the process to just show up, do what needs to be done and do that every single day. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference between process goals and results goals, right? Like we need, yeah. we need, we need to know what we're shooting for, but we also need something in front of us to say, this is the, what the next step is that I need to take and make sure you keep taking that next step. So if you don't have that plan, those, yep. what are those check boxes I need to make sure I'm consistently hitting and then down the road is the result, but I got to, this process is just as important. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. And then what was the third one? A uh, curiosity. My, that's this is my favorite one. This is the yeah. one where I I think so many people, and I'll just I'm going to say this, and then I'll let you segue into the rest of your thoughts on on curiosity. I think curiosity is a skill mm. that more people need to cultivate. Yeah, it's. Uh, do you have kids? Yes, they're all older, older now, but yeah, 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 they're all I in their twenties. <clears throat> I think as a as parents you, uh, curiosity can at times be like the bane of your existence, right? Because when your kids <laughs> yes. are little, what, what do they ask you all the time? All the time. Yep. Why? 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 Yep. And I remember even before my kids were born, you know, I've been coaching my, my oldest is 12. So I had already been coaching for a while, but I remember, uh, when he started getting to that point and wanting to like, ah, just for a split second, like, just give me a break, dude. But I was like, no, 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 I don't ever want to shut that down because it, I, I agree with you that like so many people these days, it, it is a skill that they now have to go out and cultivate because, you know, maybe they got shut down whenever they were younger, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, I do think it is certainly a skill. Cause like I said before, you want to learn to ask a lot of questions and then you learn to ask better questions like you're doing mm -hmm. here, right? Like this is certainly a skill to be really adept and good at interviewing people and getting them to talk about, you know, meaningful things or say it in a meaningful way. But, um, 
it's I just think it's it's really the corner one of the cornerstones. Like that's why it's on the back of the shirt of somebody that is going to be successful, you know, in the coaching field and mm-hmm. whatever kind of coaching it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how do you try to cultivate curiosity in your clients? Um, so I am, I am big on, I know this is kind of like such a cliche buzzword these last few years, but big, big on empowering my clients. So mm-hmm. when they ask me a question, I don't do this to be a politician or anything. I will kind of <laughs> turn it around on them and say, um, that's a great question. What do you think? So it's, mm-hmm. well, should I do 10 pounds or 15 pounds? Um, well, what do you think? What did you do last time? You know, well, I think I could do 50 pounds. Like my high school boys, they all think they can bench, you know, 135, you know, the very first day. Well, what makes you think that you can? You know, oh, right. I saw my buddy. Well, well, tell me about your buddy. Oh, he's been training for 10 years. Okay. So you think that you'll be able to start. So I, I just lead them kind of down that path. And then mm-hmm. over time, I, I will have that conversation. Hey, I want you to start thinking for yourself and not just becoming dependent on me yes. because one day, yeah. like, like it taught us all one day, maybe your gym's not available and you can't go in and ask all the questions. So if I create an environment of dependency, that's not actually doing anything for them in the long run. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think curiosity, how you ended that is a key point I want to bring out. And that is if you, are giving your power away, you have no need for curiosity. If you're relying on someone else, if, unless you're, you only need curiosity if you're in the process of taking control of the direction you want to go. Oh, I like that a lot. Right? Yeah. That's because a great without spin it, you don't that. need it. Yeah. 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 I, like, I like how you, I like how you ended that. I like that, tie that up. So you started in sports, sports performance, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you moved into, was it directly into CrossFit? Did you do like personal training first? Like what was your, your progression <laughs> as a coach? Yeah. So, um, I started working at that place kind of like as an intern way early days. And then when I was in college, I got an opportunity to work with the Florida football team, the basketball team, like, awesome. you know, division one college athletics, it, and this was like the greatest time to be in it at the time when in championships. And I was just in the right place at the right time. Um, after that, I went down to IMG academies in Bradenton, Florida and worked again, professional athletes, uh, division one, um, tennis, golf, soccer, basketball, foot, like all the major sports. And then when I left there, I ended up getting a position as a, uh, strength and conditioning coach for the New York Yankees. And oh, wow. so okay. did, yeah, did that. And then it was, it was right, right about that time. I think that this was probably Oh six. Yeah. 2006 is when I first got introduced to CrossFit. And so obviously I'm very interested just in all things fitness. And up to this point, I had already done gymnastics. I, I had done track and field stuff. I had done Olympic weightlifting. So kind of the core pieces of the CrossFit, you know, ecosystem, but mm-hmm. I had never seen them kind of combined together. And that really uh, interested me. And I loved the idea of creating my own thing. So it was just kind of a natural progression for me to um, open my own facility. And CrossFit was just kind of right place, right time. Um, and so we opened a CrossFit facility back in 2011. Uh, my wife and I, I left my, I had a corporate job at this time. I left there when she was seven months pregnant and it was, I always say to people, it was never sink or swim. It was swim because we opened and two months later, my son was born. And, uh, so it had to work and, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So over the years, you know, we, we dabbled in CrossFit. I, I coached Olympic weightlifting people. Uh, I still coached sports performance and that's, that's kind of been where I've lived the last, you know, 22 years of my life, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you've seen a lot of people come through and yeah. you've been through a lot of changes, right? Changes through CrossFit changes with yeah. changes with, I mean, uh, there's been so many different things. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So you're one of the, you're not quite an OG, but you're, you're, you're up there. You've been yeah, for a while. certainly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's certainly been in, I it, remember the very first CrossFit gym that I went to, we had, you'll, you'll appreciate this. You remember back in elementary school, you had those televisions that were on the rolling carts. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. So my gym had one of these and had a DVD player that was playing the 2007, um, every second counts CrossFit games, DVD <laughs> on loop 
Like that <sighs> was the first place I was like, oh that's man, awesome. this is, yeah, it was really that's cool. Hilarious. So yeah, that's, uh, that dates me for sure, man. That's why, so, uh, yeah. So I, I like how, you know, all of these things about CrossFit kind of brought you, brought you to it. Um, what are the, the things now? So let's talk about this. What's, what's different about how you view CrossFit now mm. than how you did when you first started? So I love the sport of mm -hmm. CrossFit. It's yeah. fascinating to me. Uh, I, I just, I love that it's, you know, a mixture of everything. You know, there's, there's just so much variety in the sport and I love that about it. What I, what I didn't love was kind of a big aha moment for me years ago. We, we had a, I was, I was at the gym one night. Uh, I wasn't coaching. I was one of my other coaches was running the class at the time. And I was just, just there as the owner, just kind of hanging out, checking in with everybody. And I went up to one of our clients. He's probably like mid early to mid fifties. And you know, all the classic, you know, issues, you know, he's been through a lot, shoulder stuff, hip stuff, knees. I mean, everything, yep. you know, this guy, you know, had broken on him just by way of living life. Right. Right. And he's like, Hey coach, what do you think I should, should do, you know, for my workout tonight? And I was like, um, I think that you should maybe just go for a walk for like 30 minutes. I think that's the best thing for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, uh, yeah, but that's not CrossFit. And I said, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And it was at that moment and, and kind of what had been brewing up to that point is instead of it just being, you know, talking about the movement pieces and talking about nutrition, because that's certainly foundational. I was talking to people about their sleep, their stress management. And then this eventually morphed into my model of holistic coaching, what I called the SEM model, S-E-M-M, -M, which stands Ooh. for sleep, eat, move and manage. Oh, dude, so, I love it that became the four pillars that we coached people on. And we didn't even talk about this part of my journey, but uh, early days into me running my gym, I ran across Chris Cooper and uh, Two Brain Business. And um, I became a mentor, um, a mm -hmm. business mentor with Two Brain. And I'm still there to this day. So talk about being an OG. I've been there for a while too. Um, yeah. I, but anyway, I so owe, he, go ahead. Yeah, good. I, was just gonna, I owe a lot of where I am today to Chris. Yeah. Is um, his evolved. just the introduction of some of the concepts like help first is and probably always will be the foundation for everything that I do. Right. That book help first. And then he introduced me to start with why. Right. Yeah. Those two books, if it weren't for him, I might might not have never heard of those books. Right. So being introduced to those two books had really become like the guiding principles behind everything I do. So I yeah, absolutely owe a lot to yeah. Chris. And I was in two brain as well when I owned my gym. So yeah, yeah, man, things. it, um, you know, so when I kind of made that shift to how we would coach and then I'd be on these calls with owners and coaches, they would mm -hmm. ask about like coach development. And so then I kind of put this thing together with Chris, we called it two brain coaching at the time. Um, and that kind of formed the foundation for like, Hey, if you want to develop your coaches, here's the model, here's the, yeah. the four pillars. And then eventually it turned into my company now, which is the refined art of coaching. But that's essentially, you know, the, the model that we, you know, coach on in terms of the pillars and looking at things holistically, it's not just movement. It's not just nutrition, it's sleep and stress management. We kind of bookended mm -hmm. it with that. Awesome. That's fantastic. So it's not just sleep or it's not just movement. It's not just exercise. It's not just nutrition. It sounds like you're talking about what I, my system, my method, right? I call it the F2 method, fitness is freedom method. And that is, it's, it's a, it's a combination of mindset, fitness and nutrition, right? It's all three. And there's, yeah. you know, we, we're talking about the same thing. We just have exactly. different ways of presenting the information, right? Yeah. So, so talk about that because I love the corollaries, the similarities between your journey and mine is I got to a certain point in my experience as a CrossFit coach where I realized, wait, it's very similarly, there's more to this. Mm. It's not just about working hard. It's not just about eating the right things. There's a mindset thing. There's a sleep thing. There's a, there's, there's a whole bunch of other things that we need to look at. Let's talk about those four things specifically in someone's journey. Um, cause I think you, I mean, you break it down really well. Like why is sleep important? Let's start with sleep and then we'll go through eat, move and manage. 
So to me, what each of these pillars do is they inform and influence one another. Yes. So when I'm talking about in the curiosity stage, when somebody comes in for their consultation, let's say, and I'm asking them all these questions, I don't have like a script of like, okay, first I need to ask about sleep and then I need to, um, now not to say that scripts don't work because when you're first getting started, like I said, you want to ask a lot of questions and it helps to know what to ask, but mm -hmm. kind of like this conversation, we don't have a script. It's just free for all, but we're going to get all the things out there. And so I just ask them, you know, how much do you sleep? You know, how well do you sleep? Because that tells me a lot about what they should focus on eating, what they should focus on from an exercise standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, how it's going to impact their stress management. Like all of these pieces, you can't just isolate one um, right. and say, well, if you, if you just dial this in, if you just exercise harder, well, if somebody is stressed <laughs> out to the max, they've got <laughs> six kids at home, a very demanding job, intensity ain't the solution, brother. Like, mm. I'm sorry, that well, shit sailed a long time ago. Yeah. You need to tell them they need to sleep more intensely. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah exactly. Yes. Rest, yeah. rest, rest with more intensity. Yeah, more aggression <laughs> whenever you rest. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah so nobody wants nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear take a day off. Nobody wants to hear you're go you're doing too much. Yeah, yeah. And so what I'm basically doing in each in each of the pillars, uh, I basically in my mind, I and I I share this you know on social media on our website mm -hmm. too, but there's basically a, a framework um, from zero to 10 of like 10 being the beacon of great sleep, of great nutrition. And I'm yep. figuring out like, where are they from a zero to 10? And that tells me like, okay, this person's a three here, a two here, a seven here. Okay, then what are the action steps that I can take to kind of move them along? And yep. these beacons, by the way, they're probably unachievable for most people, but that's okay. We still want to have some sort of lighthouse for them to work towards and know that they can be progressing and getting better. So right, in my right. mind, when it's like, well, what do I ask about that? Well, I'm just trying to see where they fall kind of on my framework for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it establishes a direction. At least you know which where, where you're moving towards. Exactly. So sleep, um, do you how do you help people? One of the one of the most common questions I get is I'm having trouble sleeping. I keep waking up or I can't fall asleep or whatever else. Let's talk about some practical things real quick. What are some things that you do to help people improve their sleep? So I break sleep coaching, if we're going to call it that, into two mm -hmm. distinct buckets, uh, doing it well, um, doing it enough, right? How much mm, are you yeah. getting in quality and quantity? Um, and I actually posted something about this on social media a few weeks ago, and it was is a big generalization, but I, the, I think that I got the point across is I'm tired of seeing people just blindly tell other people, Hey, just sleep for seven to nine hours a night. Right. That's I, everyone knows that that's probably how much they should be sleeping, but not everybody has that luxury. Like if you're an mm -hmm. overnight worker or if you've got newborns or the list goes on and on and on. And so quantity yeah. is actually the last thing that I start with when it comes to sleep. I want to know how well you're sleeping. So when you wake up, are you still tired? Do you have to wake up with an alarm? Do you wake up later on the weekends than you do during the week because you don't have to? Um, what's the temperature? So the temperature and the darkness in your room are usually the two low hanging fruits that I go for. That's I tell everybody I'm, that. Yep. Yep. I'm not asking you to sleep more because most people are like, I, I just can't. And I'm empathetic to that. I got two young kids. I'm, I'm not telling you to put your phone away, you know, six hours before you go to bed. Like <laughs> I, it's much easier just to say, look, man, take two degrees off of your thermostat, you know, cover up the lights in your bedroom, make it super dark and just start there, you know, right? Yeah, like just start with that. Um, because the, you know, the, one of the, the beacons that I'm looking for when I, I say a, a beacon of great sleep is where you wake up feeling well rested, mm -hmm. um, pain free, restored and mentally acute. Mm -hmm. So like that's that's what we're going for. My dad, he's closing in on 70 years old and he sleeps like four to five hours a night and he wakes up feeling great. Does yep. he need to sleep more? No. No, everybody needs eight hours, Josh. Come on. Yeah. They don't know yeah. what they're talking about. 
That's uh, yeah. That's I think that's great advice. Yeah, yeah. With everything that we do, is start. You know, what's the easiest things we can do to help improve whatever yep. it is we're trying to improve? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about eating because there are. I think I counted last week, and there's like 18 million different ways to eat. Um, what are the things the the check marks or the sliding scale when you're looking at nutrition for people that you that you focus on? Yeah. So it again, just like sleep, I, I bucket it into quantity and quality. Mm -hmm. Um, like my, my beacon here is, you know, the, the goal is to, to have a, a whole foods profile, maximal nutrient density supports mental acuity, daily physical function. So like, what are you doing now? Like survival. And then mm -hmm. what do you want to do in the future for your movement, movement progression? Right. So thriving. Yes. So that's what, what I want nutrition to do. And notice I didn't say anything about like cure disease, yep. reduce body fat, like none of that stuff. Uh, it's not a fix for poor lifestyle habits. Ironically, if you just take care of what I just said and pursue the beacon, all those other things fall into place. All of them. Yeah. So, that's crazy, right? Wow. Yeah. If we don't do bad things to our body, our bad yeah. body will be able to do good things. Okay. Yeah. Because cool. if you, if you chase the weight loss or the fat loss, you can get there with some things that I didn't mention, but mm -hmm. you're going to make massive sacrifices in other areas, right? Oh, like, and it's huge, probably yeah. not going to be sustainable. So yeah. you ask kind of like the, you know, the first couple of things is, um, rest and digest. So sit down, mm -hmm. chew your food 20 to 30 times and enjoy some conversation with people around you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, just start there. Well, what about organic, non-organic and macros and micros and no, 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 no. Just sit down, take your electronics away, chew your food, have good conversation. Mm -hmm. Just start there. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think that's one of the biggest things that, you know, people can argue or talk about all the different studies and evaluations of the healthiest parts of the world and all these other things. But I think the one constant in all of those discussions for the areas of the world that have the healthiest population, right? The longest living populations. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I think is different, particularly from the U S is that most of those countries are community based when it comes to food. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge, it's a huge factor that a lot of people don't talk about. I was fortunate enough. Uh, so I've, I've coached some really high level Olympic weightlifters in my, in my day. And several years ago, uh, I had a handful of athletes make it to the worlds and they were held in Spain that year. And I'd never been to Spain um, mm -hmm. and went there and exactly what you said, like everybody is sitting down with family, having a great time, so much fun. And the food is unbelievable, mm -hmm. but y you're exactly right. Like everybody is just with family. And I think that's a huge missing piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And then what do you have next? You have move and then manage. Is that what yes. the last two are? Yep. So movement is, I always say, just move every day. And of course people mm -hmm. are like, well, like that doesn't, you know, tell me much. And so then I take it a step further and I say, just get good blood flow from head to toe every day. Okay. And There's a t-shirt. Yeah. You don't have a t-shirt yet? No. Blood flow <laughs> from head to toe. <laughs> yeah. You got to talk to Matt and get yourself a t-shirt. Oh man. I like that. All right. TM right here. We just, we just did it on this <laughs> podcast. And then they're like, okay, but really what should I do? Um, some form of resistance training right? This could be body weight. It could be weights. It could be kettlebells. Mm -hmm. It could be resistance bands. I really don't care. Um, and day one and then day two, some form of getting your heart rate elevated. I don't talk to me about zones and I got to be in the blue mm -hmm. zone and the zone two and the seven and the intense. No, 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 no. Just, just breathe heavy one day, do some resistance training another day, rinse and repeat done conversation over and do that consistently every day. Yeah. Every day. I like it. Every day. Okay. Yeah. And then that's, that's a nice, easy one. What about manage manage? What stress, stress management. Ah, the so stress. It's, yeah. It's not stress elimination because that's a uh, pie in the sky. That doesn't I am exist. so glad you said that. Yeah. It's uh stress is how we adapt and you can adapt good or bad, by the way, uh, you can adapt to beating your head in at the gym every day. Um, but stress is just part of daily life. Um, but when we talk about stress management, what we actually get to at the very end, and I just kind of had this aha moment several months ago when I was kind of reframing the way that I thought about this pillar, it was at the end of the day, the beacon is, this is about leadership. 
this particular pillar. But the first person that you lead is yourself. And the first way that you do that is you figure out what are the values and priorities in your life because chronic stressful situations occur when those things are out of alignment with what you're actually doing. So like if you can set that and I could see you going crazy, I'll let you jump oh, I in love it. Second. I love it. But Dude, like, we are so aligned. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. When, when you can set those in sync, it doesn't eliminate it, but it allows you to lead yourself and then lead the people that are in your immediate charge, your, your wife, your husband, your kids, mm -hmm. and then your community before you think about leading outside of that. Yeah. 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 So yeah, absolutely. Give me some of yours with that. Cause you, Oh my God, was stressful. Really you said it, you said it all, man. I think the biggest thing people need to understand is you can't get rid of stress. Stress is a requirement for life. Yeah. You don't want to, we can't live without it. Like, I mean, that's, it's, it's, I, I have a, a list of I book ideas that I maintain that never get shorter. And one of them is, um, the idea behind it is, is, is something about stress is life. Yeah. If we think about every, every function, every experience that we have is either preparing for stress, dealing with stress or recovering from stress. Yes. Everything in our life is stress. So the, it's not about the removal. Like you said, it's about the management. It's about identifying what stress we want to deal with, mm -hmm. maximizing the impact from a beneficial perspective from that and minimizing the negative impact from other types of stress. Yep. hundred percent. And, and that's, that's what it's about. And I think people there, and obviously we could talk all day about the different kinds of stress and where stress comes from, right? Physical, mental, emotional, environmental, all those different things. But for the physical manifestation that people have because of the emotional or mental games they're playing with themselves it has to do exactly what you said. It's the alignment of their values and what they're trying to do versus what they, what is really important to them. Yes. They're trying to do all these things, but really what's important is this thing over here. And there's not an alignment between the energy expended and the direction they're moving. Yeah. And that's where, that's where stress comes from. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to hear you say that because the way that I think about like the whole values and priorities thing is like values is like deep to your soul. Like what, what you say matters to you. Priorities is where you're actually spending your time. And mm -hmm. this can be like an uncomfortable truth when I work with people and I give them these exercises to do for me, um, is I say, okay, like, tell me like, what's the most important things to you? And it's like family and my kids and yada, yada, yada. Okay. Well then tell me, you know, how do you spend your day? Well, I'm at work for 10 hours and then I go out for drinks afterwards and then I'm home to kiss my kids good night. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, those things are out of alignment and no judgment. But, you know, if you're saying this thing, but you're doing this thing, like, yeah, you're dealing with the stresses that um, you're creating for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you either want to change and decide to change or you don't. Yeah. I tell you, I like to, to kind of, kind of connect it to identity a lot. Mm. And, you know, when I explain it, I, one of the ways that I explain stress is from an alignment perspective is you have a picture of the life that you're looking to live and you, these, there's certain things that that person does every day. Yes. And the life that you're currently living, you're saying you want to get to that point, but you're still doing the things of the person you are today. And you can't move on to be that other person if you keep doing these things. And that's where some of that stress comes from because you haven't moved into that. You haven't manifested that by action in, 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 into your life. So yeah, uh, there's, again, we could probably talk about this, this <laughs> right. for yeah. hours, right? Yeah. Fantastic, man. All right. So can I make a real quick, interesting observation and you probably yeah. already have, but yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we talked earlier about the difference between like methods and principles, and I'm sure you've heard this quote as to methods. There are many principles. There are a few mm -hmm. methods fall away, but principles stand the test, whatever the, the whole thing is. Yeah. Um, so here we are two coaches with like, you know, what, 40 something years of experience, whatever it is, a, a lot of mm -hmm. experience. And um, we both have boiled it down to like, these are the the these are the principles, like just do these yes. things, you know, 100%. like that's what success is in this realm. And, and that is one of the reasons we, you know, we talked previously to this recording that I want to start getting more coaches on 
on my channel because of that. The yeah. one thing I'm realizing that I think more people need to hear is from people who have been coaching for a long time and have experience working with hundreds of people. And the truth of the matter is, and here's the thing, as a gym owner, I know this doesn't sell. As a gym owner, I'm sure you know this doesn't sell. That's the message that we're say saying, that. we can't put on a slogan, we can't put on a Facebook ad, come in and do the basics. Yeah. Right. No one's going to come. We got to, we got to, it's not sexy, Yeah, but it's what works and it's what works every single time. Yeah. You know? So yeah, absolutely. I, I'm a hundred percent there, man. Awesome. It's fantastic. Um, okay. So talking about bringing people in and working with people, what, what are some of the, like, tell us a little bit about the people you're working with now, you know, you still have the gym. Are you doing the coaching I, coaches? No, stuff so I, I sold my gym uh, in October of last year, and uh, okay. but um, with the agreement with the the new person, it, it's long story. It's couldn't have been a better situation for both of us. We could get into it on a whole other episode, but it's amazing. <laughs> One of the things that the, they said is like, "Look, we know you love to coach. We would love you to coach, so you can coach as much as you want." And I do every mm. single day. I still am very like toe in the water of or really swimming and coaching just because I yeah. absolutely love to do it. Um, and it is a hundred percent, uh, youth and sports performance that I do like, oh, no, okay. It. Yeah. Well, let's ask this question. What are the parallels? Because, okay. Most of my clientele are women over 40, women over mm -hmm. 45, 40 or older. Yeah. Um, and I know one of the persistent things that I have to deal with is the age, the lack of experience, all the different things. You know, and I'm, I, 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 I hearken back to the, you know, Greg Glassman's, the, the needs of the, was it the needs of the power lifter and the grandmother, you know, differ by, vary by uh, degree, not kind, no, right. Yep, we all, yep. we all need the same thing. It doesn't make a difference, but sometimes it's hard for people to hear that, Yep. um, that you need the same thing as this kid over here, who's playing football or playing basketball or playing soccer and they're doing all this stuff. Well, that doesn't mean you have to do what they're doing, mm -hmm. but the, many of the goals that they're working for the same goals you're working for. We still want to improve your balance. We still want to improve your coordination. We still want to, you know, improve your strength and endurance and all these things. How do you see from your time? You, this is interesting because you've been in both camps. You've been with yeah. the general population. You've been with the sports performance. What are the similarities being the, between the two, not from the training perspective, but from the mental and mindset perspective? Mm, similarities. I, I, th I think this, I might be just kind of cheating my way through this one, but I, uh, <laughs> maybe I don't have a better answer. I think it's a realization on both of their parts, which is a big step is that I need help. They're both brave Ooh. enough to put their hand up and say, um, I need some help, which I have mm -hmm. a tremendous amount of respect for because I don't know if you're anything like me, like as an entrepreneur, it, sometimes it's super hard to put your hand up and be like, I need help. So for these people right. to do that, whether it's a, a high school athlete or, you know, a 40 plus, you know, woman that's dealing with some issues, I think that's huge. Um, that's what I, that's what I would say. That's what comes to mind first. Okay. Okay. Anything else like about the journey, the process of change, the growth progression? Yeah. I mean, okay. We talk about, you know, sleep, eat, move, manage. Are those the same things that athletes deal with as opposed to general general population? Yeah. So one of the things that I was thinking about when you started to kind of go down the road a little bit further that I think is common that most gen pop clients don't think is, is athletes are just as messed up mentally, if not more <laughs> so than yeah. gen pop clients. Like yeah. they deal with the same struggles. They deal with the struggles of, is this really the right thing for me? do I really need to worry about, you know, my sleep and man, I didn't, I didn't hit the goal or the weight or whatever it is that I thought that I was going to by this point. So it's a lot of the same things. There are some stark differences, uh, which I could get into if you want, but, um, mm -hmm. those are, I, I think for just coaches listening in, no matter where you're at in your journey, just know that the mental stuff that you deal with in either one, um, is so similar. Like, I don't want to say it's the same, but it's very, very, very similar. Right. A lot of parallels, a lot of parallels. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that athletes, just like normal people, um, tend to fixate on things that aren't actually moving them forward? Oh, yeah. Especially my high school kids. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, my high school boys, you can imagine all they want to do is curl and bench press. And, <laughs> you know, um, they talk about, <laughs> excuse me, they talk about, you know, crushing a bunch of food at McDonald's afterwards and just like, you know, all the typical, you know, cyclical pattern trends that you remember from when you were a high school kid and all the things, mm -hmm. the yep. protein powders and the creatines. And it's like, these are all the things that are I'm not doing well enough at, which is the reason why I'm, I'm only 140 pounds instead right, of, right. or it's biology and you've only been lifting for three months and you haven't hit puberty yet. That makes a big difference. Yep, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So th those are the, those are the things. Okay. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, this has been absolutely fantastic. I feel like I have more things that we could talk about, but I don't want to take another hour of your time. Uh, I know, um, right? This could go for a while. Yeah. Yeah. What are some things just uh, in the journey? You know, I love the focus. It's where my focus has been a lot recently of concepts over, uh, over pro, you know, concepts and principles over protocols. Uh, my phrase is marry principles, date protocols. Mm. That's, that's, that's one of my phrases. Actually, my girlfriend told me that one. So I can't take credit I for that. She, yeah. gave me that. Yeah. she gave me that one. Well, you're on the but, podcast. Um, you can take credit. Yeah. <laughs> I like that though. Principles over protocols. That's got a better yeah. ring than principles over methods. Yeah. 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 Mm. So, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. So, you know, I really like how, you know, experience, um, you know, does a lot for understanding what works if someone's paying attention. And, you know, for anybody that's listening to this, if you're stuck, if you're looking for help, please find somebody who's willing to listen, ask questions, be curious mm. and help you figure out and empower you to figure out things for yourself. Right. I, you know, I also love how you started this off by saying, you know, I don't want people that are dependent on me. You know, I, I say all the time, my job is to get you to graduate from me. Yes. If, if, if you, if you have to stick with me for the rest of your life, then I'm, I'm a whore, then I'm a bad coach. Yeah. That's why I have a love hate relationship with retention. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like pretty much, I appreciate that's not your my time goal. And, and I tell uh, people look forward like, look, to if, doing if, this if again we're sometime. still doing this Sounds dance, good, man, thank you again, you know, way down the road, yeah. I've gone way wrong because that, you know, yeah. Awesome. Driving, right, driving man. is such a, just, I'll leave you with this thought. Driving yeah. is a way bigger consequence if you get it wrong, right? When you're on the road, um, versus like coming to the gym or figuring out what you should do for your workout. And yet, do you remember driver's ed? It was like a semester in high school. And then yeah. it's like, you're good. And yeah. Ooh, you, I love that analogy. Yeah. Right. So if we, not now, some people certainly need some driving lessons. I'm not going down that road, <laughs> like, but you don't need driving lessons every single day. Right? right. So if we could do it with that, I think it stands to reason we could do it with health and fitness. Yeah, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. Awesome. And where can people find you? And I don't have, I, you know, I'm sure I have some people that are in this space, health and fitness space as coaches or trainers, things like that. Um, so, you know, you do help coaches, you do, you do coach training, things like that. So talk a little bit real quick about what you do there and how people can find you. Yeah. So you can find me, um, on social, my personal social is J Mart CFG. And then the business is the refined art of coaching. So you can find our website there. And we really have three different offers, uh, education, which is free. So mm -hmm. we post free guides, information, all the stuff. I just give it away because I was, in a very fortunate position through my career and I just want to pay it forward. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more structured, you're looking to get a certification, figure out how do I actually coach? Um, we have a, a course for that. Um, and then it takes you, we just, it's foundational coaching principles. We talk about sleep, eat, move, manage. We talk about the framework that we teach coaches, which is learn, design, deliver, refine. And we take you all the way through that, how to execute on it. And then mm -hmm. if you want to do something ongoing, we offer ongoing mentorship with me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to doing this again sometime. Sounds good, man. Thank you again. You bet.